about a week ago, the team behind Pydantic released Pydantic AI, which is a great framework for building LLM-based agents in Python. So let's walk through sort of the getting started, the hello world with building an agent with Pydantic AI. And then we're gonna look at how do we add tools to an agent. And specifically, we're gonna look at how do we add a code interpreter using RZA. So how do we build a simple agent? Uh, so first we're going to import, <laughs> you can see I've done this before, uh, cause Cursor very eagerly wants to uh, complete all this. We're just gonna define an agent. And for a simple agent, all we need is a model and a system prompt. We're gonna use OpenAI's GPT 4.0. We're gonna say user message uh, equals hello there. We are going to uh, collect the result from using agent.run sync user message. Uh, that sync there means synchronous. Uh, and then once we get that result back, we can print result.data. That's gonna give us the latest message back. All right, so this is one, two, three, four, five lines. Let's run then Pydantic AI. And you say, hello, how can I assist you today? All right, and so obviously if we then change this user message to uh, what is the capital of France, I don't know why that's become such a common question in these tutorials, but it is, right? So the capital of France is Paris. All right, great. If you've gone through different methods of interacting with LLMs uh, via code, this is about the simplest one there is, right? So you're already starting to see some of the abstractions that Pydantic AI has given you. Um, let's build this into a little bit more of a chatbot, give it a little bit more interactivity. Uh, let's give the user the option to quit. Uh, I'm going to uh, loop through here, and then I'm going to print the user data, or sorry, the result data. I'm going to get new input from the user, and then I'm going to um, run the agent again, uh, but this time, in addition to that user message, I'm also going to pass in um, a named parameter, message history, and I'm going to uh, pass in there result.all messages. This is a method. Make sure you get these parentheses on there. Uh, and so this result.all messages stores the full conversational history. Um, and again, something that if you've ever built a chatbot on your own uh, using the vanilla libraries, this is logic that you would historically have to write yourself. And so Pydantic AI is sort of giving this to you for free, uh, which is really, really nice. If I run this again, all right, now I, capital, I guess I could change that. Uh, let's say, who are you? And now you can see we're having a chat. Uh, so let's ask it a question that uh, large language models can't typically answer. Say, what, what is today's date? Uh, and actually, sometimes uh, some models can answer this. Uh, you know, the, today's date is past the knowledge cutoff, right? Um, and so this is saying that the knowledge cutoff here is October of 2023. Uh, actually, some model providers, I believe Anthropic, will inject today's date into the system prompt. So you can answer that question with some uh, LLMs but via a little bit of cheating. One question that almost no models can answer though is what is the current time? Uh, I guess unless model providers are dynamically injecting that in, but as far as I know, they don't. Uh, and that's the answer that we get. It says, I'm unable to provide the current time because uh, I don't have access to real-time information. So this is a good example of a place where a tool would be useful, uh, where you can equip an agent with a tool to answer questions that the model cannot on its own. Uh, so let's take a look at doing that. Uh, we are going to build a code interpreter, and this is gonna be pretty straightforward, uh, but before we do it, I'm going to switch over to a different file to show you how RZA works, because uh, it's a little bit easier to understand how it works outside of the context of uh, the agent, and then once we get this method working here, we'll pull it back into the agent and equip the agent with that tool. We're going to simply uh, import RZA IO. We're gonna define a uh, new method here called execute code. Uh, and sure, we'll just step through it. So I'm gonna pass in a single parameter here, code, it's just a string. Um, and then I'm gonna print out that code. And then I'm gonna create a new client uh, to connect with RZA. I have set my RZA API key as an environment variable. Also, I should have mentioned, I have uh, set OpenAI API key as an environment variable before I did the previous bits. Uh, pretty standard stuff there. With this one line here, once I have my client, I am going to run rizza.command.execute. I'm gonna tell it that I'm running Python and I'm just passing in the code. 
Riz is going to return a result, and inside that result is a standard out response. Then down here, I'm just going to run uh, execute code print hello world. All right, so you can see here uh, it says uh, execute code print hello world, and then we print out uh, hello world. I did cheat just a little bit here. I um, returned result dot standard out. Uh, actually, if I rerun this again, you'll see that uh, the result that's returned by RZA. Uh, is this command execution response. It has three properties on it, exit code, standard error, and standard out. So if the program runs successfully, the exit code is gonna be zero, the output of the program is gonna be in standard out. If we throw an error, which happens, uh, especially when LLMs are writing your code, this exit code is going to be one, and standard error is going to contain the error message. Right, uh, And then every once in a while, you might run into this little use case where uh, an LLM writes code, but it doesn't print the uh, result of that code. And so standard out's blank, but the, the but you don't throw an exit code. Uh, so it sort of fails silently. When we actually move this over to our agent, we're going to put in conditionals to handle some of those different cases. But for now, let's just take this method and we are gonna move that over here to our Pydantic AI, I need to uh, import Riza IO up here. And then I'm going to add this single decorator called agent.toolplane. So uh, agent here is this agent that I've defined uh, and we're using tool plane. Now you might be wondering why are we calling this a plane tool? Tools generally are going to want to have access to the context of the agent run. A lot of tools, for instance, are going to want to be able to see the conversation history in order to perform whatever task they need to perform. Most tools are probably going to be like that. You just define those with a decorator called tool. In our case, though, execute code only needs a single string. That's the code to be executed. We can make that a tool plain. It makes the definition of the method a little bit simpler. This is such a great abstraction. Uh, if you have ever tried to do function calling or tool use uh, using the vanilla helper libraries for OpenAI, let's say, uh, you know that you can get these long JSON objects where you're describing the function. Here, we just need this decorator, but to give some more information to the LM about when to use it, we are going to add a doc string that will describe the function, uh, so what it does. Uh, we're also gonna describe how to use it. So we're gonna tell the LLM here that it's important to print uh, the uh, output of whatever the code is standard out. Uh, we're also gonna tell it to only use the standard library and built-in modules. Uh, RZA, you can create custom runtimes that do have um, different helper libraries that you want. You do have to set that up ahead of time. So we're gonna tell the LLM here to only use the standard uh, Python libraries. All right, the other thing that we wanna add here is uh, those conditionals that I talked about. So if we throw an error, we're gonna use this thing called the model retry. There are times when your uh, tool calls are going to fail. Uh, and model retry is how you indicate to the agent that you want it to retry and you give it information to help it do better next time. In this case, the information that we're passing back to it is the error. Uh, there's also that silent failure mode that we talked about where the exit code would be zero. The program runs just fine, but the standard out is blank. So if that happens, we're just going to uh, give like sort of a pseudo error message back to the uh, LLM and tell it to retry again. And then if we do make it through uh, everything there, then we are going to uh, print result standard out uh, and we're going to return that back to the model. Let's give this a try. Uh, and we'll say, what is the current time? All right, cool. And you can see that we have executed code. First off, let's just acknowledge that LLM realized that I had asked it a question that it could not answer on its own. The LLM realized that it had a tool that could solve this problem. And the LLM on its own decided to use that tool. And the LLM wrote code and knew the right syntax and knew what parameter it needed to pass in. It got a result. It gave us the time. The current time is 2024, 1212. Uh, now this is off from my local time zone. Uh, so let's just see if we can convert this to Eastern Standard Time. All right, so it decides to write more code. Um, and this is actually, oh, this is really interesting. If we looked here, it tried to use um, 
a Python package here called PYTZ, Python time zone. That is not a standard package. Um, and so it then tried to it retried. Um, and I do have a limit set on here. I think might be the default, uh, that model retries. It says tool exceeded max retries count of one. If we look in the docs here, we define the uh, agent. We have retries. The default here is one. Uh, why don't we give it a couple more tries there? So uh, we'll come up here. We'll change our agent. Uh, we'll say retries equals, let's just say five. Um, of course, the next time we ask it, it might work just fine. Yeah, you know, it's the problem with uh, the non-deterministic nature of these things. Uh, but if you do want to adjust, you know, obviously you don't want these things retrying indefinitely, running up a huge bill, locking up your resources. Um, but you also might, especially if you're having it write code, you might need to retry it more than once or twice as well. Uh, and so, because you know, I know it certainly takes me more than one try to get things right. Often, let's try running this again. I'll say, what time is it? Uh, oh, so this is interesting. So this time it did not want to use the tool. Uh, don't you have a tool? Yeah, you sure do. Uh, write some code to uh, figure out what time it is. I gave the time. Uh, convert this to Eastern Standard Time. All right, cool. So look here. It did try importing PYTZ again, right? And that uh, did not work. There was a little bit of a stutter there. And then it... Um, it was then executing code again from date time and port date time, uh, and it ran this. Let's see if we can get a little bit more insight into how this works, uh, and what's happening sort of behind the abstractions here. So I, I do have a, a function here called log messages. I'll need to import JSON, um, to have this work. Uh, log messages are going to just take in all messages and it's going to print them out to a file uh, called all messages.json. Uh, this will give us a little bit more of a stack trace to see what's happening, uh, underneath the abstractions. So let's try running this one more time. See if we can get some of the same behavior. All right. Uh, what time is it? All right. Uh, write some code to figure out what time it is. All right, cool. So there we got the time. I'm going to convert this to Eastern Standard Time. So there we did have that. We imported PYTZ again um, and we it did not work the first time and then it retried. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit more insight into how that process worked. All right. So here is all the messages from that run. Then I said, uh, write some code to figure it out. So now you see this model structured response. The structured response includes a list of calls. One of that call is a tool call to our tool called exit code. Uh, it passed along some arguments. Those arguments include uh, code. And there, here is the string of the code with a whole bunch of new lines in there uh, to execute the code. Uh, then we get the tool return. So this is what was passed back from RZA, right? And so then it, it used that tool return to then formulate a model text response. I then told it to convert to EST. Now is where things get uh, sort of interesting, right? So it ran code again. Um, that code included this import PYTZ, which is not a standard helper library. And I do want to acknowledge that we did tell it in the doc string to only use the standard library. It's uh, not doing it. It's not following instructions. Um, that happens uh, sometimes with these things. And, you know, I, I do suspect there's some tweaking of the doc string. There's some tweaking of the system prompt that we could do to improve reliability there. You might want to write some evals as you iterate on your system prompts. However, we would handle that down the line. We got a retry prompt because RZA threw this traceback error. And the traceback error said no model named PYTZ. Uh, and so then uh, the uh, LLM tried again. It ran another uh, model structured response. This had another tool call. This time it wrote code that did not use that. The uh, LLM was able to self-correct the code and get a successful response and then use that successful response to uh, convert the time for us. This is super exciting to me, right? Like we, we have here uh, an agent that is not only able to write code, but it's able to take the error message and self-correct the code and keep iterating until it gets something that works. Like 
That's amazing to me. So really excited for Pydantic AI. It's the best framework I've worked with so far to quickly build agents and to rapidly iterate on them. I just love some of the abstractions that they've introduced. Uh, I love how they've simplified tool calling. And I'm really excited by the opportunities that open up when your agents can not only use tools, but build their own. And I can't wait to see what y'all build with this.